you probably saw stuff about this. You guys remember how um, a little while ago there was a Batgirl movie that was shelved by, even though it was fully finished, was shelved by its production company, its studio, because uh, they didn't think it would do well and they wanted the tax break that they would get by writing it off as a loss. They thought that would be better for them than, uh, you know, fully releasing it. Yeah. Oh, they did it again. Yeah, Coyote versus... Co Coyote? What accent was that? There was a Batgirl movie? Well, no, it didn't release. Coyote... Am I, is that even an accent, or am I pronouncing it correctly, and that's just what it... I, I don't think I've ever said Coyote. No, there it is. Coyote. Coyote. I'm so tired. <laughs> Are you okay? My vacation ended earlier today. I don't normally uh, stream on Saturdays for a reason. I kind of race to this stream. That's why it started an hour late, okay? I barely had time to eat. Um, and get a good night's sleep tonight. Yeah, they made this movie, then they scrapped it. Coyote is how you pronounce it in Spanish. Why, thank you. John Cena was in it. I'm learning this right now. Fun fact, I auditioned for that Batgirl movie, LOL. I was a little salty when they announced a different girl got the role of Alicia Yeo. She wasn't even Singaporean. Oh, well, they, looks like you uh, would have been disappointed even if you had gotten the role. Um, yeah. Coyote vs. Acme, which was originally reported produced on a $72 million budget, was originally set to release earlier this year, but was shelved so Warner Bros. could take a $30 million tax write-off. Deadline reported. Uh, that's pretty gay. I think that's pretty loser shit. I feel like um. I I I feel like I, I've seen a lot of people getting kind of like not radicalized by this, but if if nothing else, it's a good junction to talk about the idea of art being made, like dozens of actors and people on the set and hundreds of composers and artists and blah blah, and then it just getting shoved into a box and thrown away. Uh, you know, and written off as a loss rather than even being released for free while being treated as a loss. But then, of course, they get like merch sales, I guess. So it wouldn't really be a loss then. It's just like it's a tax loophole. Isn't this like l losing money for Warner Bros? Well, the corporation can write it off as a loss, like as a business loss if they don't release it, because if they release it, it wasn't a loss. It was like a sold product. Bosh, is it wrong to call stuff gay as an insult? Not if you have sex with men like I do. Thank you. Not to mention a lot of pay is stipulated on royalties post-release. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's, um... Warner Bros. animated film Scoob, A Holiday Haunt, was also scrapped last year, reportedly for tax write-off purposes, though the film still completed production after the company announced it would not be released. Why? So wait, they continued to work in it after realizing it wouldn't get produced? That's so sad. Well. No, they cannot, Sequoia won. Because of pay royalty contract? I'm not saying there's no reason they do it. I'm saying that the incentives here are clearly fucked, you know? Uh, well. I mean, there's not that much to go over here, honestly. It's just, I mean, pretty much everyone agrees that it's sad. Completed seasons of television series have also been shelved by production companies. AMC scrapped shows 61st Street and Invitation to a Bonfire as part of an effort to take up to $475 million in write-offs. Jesus. If the tax was written off, then is the film not owned by the public? Public domain? No, that's a totally different thing. Yeah, that sucks really is all there is to say sometimes. I don't know. Why is this not illegal, Lamau? I mean, it's like, this is this is one of those circumstances where like art and corporate, uh, you know, like cost saving measures are, 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 are very much at odds, right? Um, another good example would be with IP law. Oh, another great example would be with um, the accessibility of video games. Like video games are, as a as a medium are very specific in in terms of their uh, how quickly they age because 
old video games, even sometimes just like 10 years old, often won't run on current systems because of the little subtleties of the, like, you know, exactly getting it to work. And as a consequence of that, there are tons of games where the only way to play them is, is, is to um, uh, emulate them, you know? And, uh, and that's really sad. You'd think that there would be a good, like, common sense rule here, which is if you have a product, like a piece of art that is not available for modern consumption on modern hardware for a given length of time that it just becomes like public domain or something, but no corporation would back that or sign off on that because there's money to be made in sort of re-releasing old stuff. Look at how often Nintendo makes money from repackaging and reselling old games, you know? I mean, many game companies do this, but... Yeah. There is a reasonably available clause in a lot of things, but I've never seen it apply. I, and so I could be wrong. Maybe there are cases where this has happened. There are so many like great games out there that you just can't access right now. And so many instances of just, they just waste there. I've never seen an example of these games being just uh, thrown out into the public good. But yeah, I don't know. There are loads of games that are simply not sold anymore to Vosh. Literally no legal way to get them. Yeah, it's really sad. It's a problem that particularly affects games for a variety of technical reasons, but it exists to some extent in, in all media, you know? Look at this little guy. Look at this little guy. Him. And that concludes the stream. Good night.